Hey, it's Jeff Chubb, and I wanted to give you the market report for July 4th, 2022. Now, I got a great comment last week in regards to the numbers and do a screen share, which uh, a little above my uh, pay grade at this point. I'm going to learn how, though, I promise. So I'm going to put all these numbers in the description below, so that way you can kind of read through them and really, you know, it's hard when people speak it sometimes with numbers. So all that's in the description below. Uh, we're going to go over the week-over-week week numbers, right, which I told you we're going to be way down last week. We're going to go over the year-over-year year numbers. So we're going to compare June 2021 to June 2022. We're ultimately going to rush through the the week over week numbers really quickly. And then I'm gonna talk about some big things that are happening in the market, really affecting uh, the real estate market as a whole, which ultimately some big happenings that are going to affect our market down the uh, down the road, if you will. So let's get into the week over week. Single family homes, we had 4,815 units on the market as of Monday. This is a decline of over 600 units. Again, completely expected. I, I knew this was going to happen. It was because of the July 4th holiday. We saw from Memorial Day. And just as a, a little kind of asterisk on it, I went back and looked at the July 4th weekend last year, and it was the same, about 600 units uh, market, you know, uh, units decline in inventory that we saw last year, too. So nothing out of the ordinary there. We had 669 single families come on the market for this last week, which is a decline of about 1,100 units, again, to be ex expected. Then we had 1,257 units go under agreement. Now our low inventory, or excuse me, our low under agreement numbers are actually going to be in next week's, right? Because the uh, activity from this week is now starting to go under agreement this uh, next week, I should say. So that's again new prediction. I know it's going to happen. Next week's under agreement numbers are going to be real low. So for condos, we had 2,556 condo units on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is about 300 units below uh, this time last week. We had 220 units that came on the market. Um, this is about 500 below than what we normally saw uh, just week over week comparison. And then 418 units went under agreement. So putting away the week over week because, again, eh, kind of a... Uh, uh, off week due to the fact of the 4th of July holiday, which by the way, I hope your 4th of July was awesome. So the year over year, so June 2021 to June 2022, and I'm also going to pepper in some uh, 2019 and 2020 stats for you um, as well. So we had 3,863 single family homes on the market at the end of June in 2021. This is compared to the 4,911 single family homes that we had in the market at the end of June of this year. Now, yes, that's a 27% growth in inventory, but put these numbers in perspective. 4,911 units that were on the market at the end of June this month compared to the same time in 2020 when we had 6,355 units on the market or compared to the same time in 2019 where we had 12,013 single family homes on the market and nobody was saying that the world was falling and the world was crashing in 2019, right? We still have a lot less inventory than we had on the market in the last quasi healthy market that we had where there was a it wasn't even a decent balance between sellers or mar sellers and buyers. It was still a pretty extreme seller's market back then, but we're shifting back, right? Um, it's just been an ultra red hot seller's market, and we're starting to shift a little, and it's a good thing for the market. Now, uh, sold in 2021, we had 6,045 single family homes sell in the state of Massachusetts in 2020 for an average sale price of $716,486. And this is compared to June 2022, where we had 5,326 units closed for an average sale price of $794,859. So we saw a 12% decline in sales uh, compared to June 2021 to June 2022. Meanwhile, prices were up about 11%. Now in the condo market, we had 2,686 units on the market end of June 2021, compared to 2,600 units in end of June 2022. So 86 units less, or about a 3% decline in the amount of inventory available to home buyers. Now, comparing it to 2020, we had 3,505 units on the market. And then in 2019, we had 4,107 units on the market. So just like the single family market, we still have a lot less inventory than we had just two years ago. Now, uh, condos that sold in June 2021, we had 2,757 units compared to the 2,273 that we saw this year. So about a 17.5% decrease in the amount of sales activity that we saw 
from June last year to June this year. And the average sale price was $618,000 compared to an average sale price of $697,000 um, in June 2022. So this is about 13% increase um, in the average sale prices for condos around the state of Massachusetts. Now, the big part is, is that, you know, talking about the big pools here, the sky isn't falling, right? Like, you know, the houses are still selling quite a bit. And I, I'm going to actually say there was a huge uptick in the amount of uh, sales activity the week before uh, July 4th weekend. And, and I, I've had a bunch of activities even in the July 4th week. Um, you know, th there's activity out there. There's actually quite a bit, more than I really truthfully thought there was going to be. I kind of thought it was going to be a quiet summer, and, and it looks like I might be just a little bit wrong about that, which is, again, a really great thing because we're seeing more inventory come on the market, which means there is more opportunity for buyers. Now, interest rates, this is a big one, and this is really affecting the market because interest rates, they settled, right? So in the month of June, I mean, they were at five, and then they went up to like, 6.25 and now as of today they're settling in that five and a half percent interest rate kind of area in the neighborhood which is really awesome if you're a buyer because if you had started in june and when the interest rate spiked over one percent i mean you literally had people lose 10 percent of their buying power in just a short period of time and by the way the jumbo market if you're looking at jumbo you know purchase those rates are still outperforming because they're currently, you know, in the mid to high fours right now, obviously depending on the person's credit, but you know, they're, they're actually really, really, really attractive rates. So we got some pretty good things going on in the mortgage market, which might just be helping, like I said, that increase in activity, which is just really awesome for the market. Now I can guarantee you that interest rates will not stay where they are today. They are going to continue to go up by design by the Federal Reserve. Everything, the whole goal is here to get, is to get more and more expensive. For every 1% interest rates go up, you and I as home buyers, we lose 10% of our buying power. So one of the most important things that I have figured out is for new buyers, I'm having them actually, you know, different, some banks offer it, not all banks do, but if you're new to the market, you're thinking about buying a house, you need to get locked in on a 90 day rate lock where you can lock in your rate the day that you start looking and you just have to be closed within 90 days. You know, so it essentially gives you 45 to 60 days of, you know, buyer searching time. This is an absolute necessity in this marketplace. If you're not doing that, then, you know, well, I guess you're doing something wrong. It's kind of the best way to say it. So if you need a recommendation of someone to go to, I'm more than happy to provide that for you. Uh, but interest rates, it's kind of two thumbs up, right? Like we're really happy at things going on. Also keep in mind, and if interest rates go up 2%, which they will, okay, if interest rates go up from, you know, call it the 5.5% to 7.5%, right, in order for you to have the same interest payment or mortgage payment that you're getting right now at this 5.5% interest rate, you would need home prices to come down 17%. It's not going to happen. Right now is a great time to buy because you're able to lock in ultimately that lower um, interest rate. Now, the Boston, the Boston metro market, it continues to outperform other markets throughout the country. I can't talk about necessarily other markets so much because, you know, you have areas where there's been high um, investor concentration buying, like by big private equity firms, right? You have some areas maybe that are more tied to the manufacturing belt, right? I can only really talk about Massachusetts. It continues to be a really strong metro market. We have a really diverse economy, which is really great, which really leads me to some of the other news that's going to start affecting some stuff around us and as things kind of play out here. Uh, so the first one is we had a major mortgage lender uh, declare bankruptcy. Uh, they're a third party. They weren't a bank. They were like a mortgage brokerage, if you think, if you will. Um, and they declared bankrupt bankruptcy last week, ceasing to uh, exist, right? Um, ultimately, one of the first of many, quite frankly. And I will say the bigger news that really didn't get too many headlines, especially out of the real estate world, was that a private equity firm, and, and again, in a lot of these markets like Charlotte, Phoenix, um, uh, Georgia, Atlanta was actually, uh, or Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> was actually the largest market where you had these private equity firms just buying up a ton of single family homes, right? Well, the first one, you know, the kind of first shot was shot off the ballot, if you will, right? Uh, one of the private equity firms stepped up and they said that they're actually going to be offloading 3,000 single family units worth about a billion dollars. Now, in the scheme of things, this is a really small amount. But like I said, it's the first shot off the ballot. And when you talk about Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts in general, 
specifically the Boston metro market, we haven't really had too much buying um, from institutional buyers buying our single family housing stock. I think because it's so darn expensive, it kind of kept those guys out, which is going to be a really, really, really great thing for us. Um, so things are starting to happen and I think they're going to affect other parts of the country a lot more than us. I'll say as we stand today on uh, you know the beginning of July, um, things are looking pretty good in Boston. We're, like I said, we're outperforming other parts of the country. We're starting to see that inventory growth, which is really great for home buyers. It's kind of settling down the market, right, where uh, that pendulum is going to continue to swing. Hopefully, you know, ultimately allowing buyers to buy houses without having to waive their mortgage contingency and their home inspection contingencies and absolutely go crazy with the, with the purchase price values, right? We're starting to see some reality that's the best word to say we're starting to see some reality kind of set in this market so all really exciting things now you know whether it's a good time to buy or sell depends on who you are what your situation is so if you have any questions about your situation we'd we'll love to chat with you um you know whether you're here or another part of the country i'm happy to chat with you in that sense kind of without dog in the fight if you will or can um can um uh, you know, kind of make some recommendations to some professionals. Where I have people all around the country that I that I know and respect, and I know would take good care of you. So, uh, should you have any questions, best number to reach me at is six one seven four eight zero two six zero zero. You can find me online at jeff at boston two dot com. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week. And make sure that um, if you have any questions or comments on how I can get better in presenting you and giving you information on a weekly basis. Throw that in the comment section. I always really appreciate it. Uh, but otherwise, have a great week.